Are you lost in the chaotic whirlwind of day-to-day busyness? Do you yearn for a deeper sense of meaning and purpose in your life? Welcome to Be You, Your Story, Your Purpose, the podcast dedicated to empowering women on their journey of self-discovery and finding their true purpose through their own story. I'm your host, Brenda Simmons. Welcome, my friends, to another episode of the Be You, Your Story, Your Purpose podcast. Today, I want to talk to you about something that our last guest, Bernadette O'Grady, mentioned, and that is having a victim mindset. And this is something that she said she had to decide to pull herself out of. And having gone through that myself, I I know what that's like. And I wanted to share with you a little bit about how what it looks like to have a victim mindset and how to get out of it and what it looks like when you don't have that. So, so what is a victim mindset? Well, being in a victim mindset is when you voluntarily release the control you have in your life, like your decisions, your attitudes, your thoughts, your, your emotions, even the results that you get to anything external. And that could be other people, other situations, Etc. It really doesn't matter. It's, it's it's you are giving that to somebody or something else. As a result, you believe that other people or situations are responsible for your happiness or anything that happens to you, whether it's good or bad. Now, I've mentioned before that I dealt with depression, but what I didn't realize in the at the time was how much of that depression was caused because I was in a victim mindset. I subscribed to it 100% and I totally felt like life was happening to me and not for me. So I'd had several miscarriages. My husband was underemployed. I was unemployed. And so we had lots of financial issues, lots of, you know, horrible things had, um, had happened to me. And again, see what I said? I happened to me. Right. And so I, I just felt like life was unfair and it was not turning out the way I wanted it to at all. Well, I, like I mentioned before, I had to decide, was I going to be happy or not? And so one of the tools that I used to help myself, you know, pull myself out of depression was personality typing um, tests, right? Personality tests. And I love these. I totally got into them because I felt like I was just getting to know myself again. I was rediscovering who I was, why I thought the way I did, why I did the things that I did, why I said things that I that I said. And, and it was really validating to me to understand that. And I remember once my husband, Brad, we were talking and he was questioning me about why I approached a situation the way that I did almost in a mocking sense. And and he probably didn't mean it that way, but that's the way that I, that I interpreted it. And rather than just accepting it and going, yeah, that's, that's just the way I am you know, or in, and that's the way I approach things. I, I remember very distinctly thinking, well, what's wrong with that? So I approach that differently than you. Why not? Why is that a bad thing? And it was such a small moment for me, but it was 100% pivotal because I was able to go, okay, well, just because something is, you know, just because something bad happened to me doesn't mean that that I'm not worthy, right? Doesn't mean that I'm powerless. I can still choose. You know, I can just because I approach that something a different way doesn't mean that it's bad. Doesn't mean that doesn't mean anything. It just is, right? And and so I pretty soon my thoughts became one of oh, it's not that interesting that I approach it that way to oh, well, if I if I consciously approach things in a certain way or think in a certain way, then pretty soon I'll have I'll have the results that come from it. And and if I have something, if I have power over something small, like like choosing the good in a in a bad situation, well, what else do I have power over? And so my thoughts snowballed like this, you know, just just being curious to 
to the different options that were out there. So, and I'm going to come back to this because uh, the, the story comes full circle. So, but before I do that, I want to discuss a little bit, how do you know if you're in a victim mindset? What are, what are the things to look out for? And this could be in yourself or maybe even in somebody else. So, a person who is in a who is in a victim mindset, they're going to say things like, it's not my fault, or I'll be happy when dot dot dot, or if only such and such would happen, then I would be able to do A, B, C, or D. Or I couldn't help it. That's a good one. <laughs> so if you'll notice any every single one of these examples, and there are, you know, hundreds of iterations of these examples, they are all deflecting responsibility. And that is super key to a victim mindset. They will give that responsibility voluntarily to somebody or something outside of themselves. So what happens when you subscribe to a victim mindset? Well, because you don't have the control because you've given it up, you will eventually feel helpless, hopeless, unworthy, unconfident, and generally stuck in life. Because if life is happening to you, there is nothing that you can do to change it, right? So another flavor of a victim mindset is being entitled. And if you really think about this, now, entitled people may seem like they they are confident. They, they may not have or may not appear to have a lot of those negative um, emotions um, that I just mentioned. However, it's still deflecting responsibility. An entitled person expects somebody else to serve them. And really, if you think about it, what they're doing, because they're expecting somebody else to do it for them, they are giving up the responsibility to live the life in a way that they should, to do the things that will move them along, whether it's everyday life things like making dinner, or big life things like making choices, right? So being entitled is definitely another flavor of that victim mindset. So what's the opposite of a victim mindset? Well, the opposite of a victim mindset is a creator mindset. So I want you to, to, in order to demonstrate this, I want you to take your hands and I want you to put your hands together at the wrist so that your your the base of your palms are together and your fingers are out so your hands are making a v right now somebody who is in a victim mindset is going to be at the bottom of that v all right they're going to um it's a very very low vibe feeling and because it's so low all they can do is they have a, a lower capacity to think or do things beyond themselves. So a somebody who's in a victim mindset will seem very selfish as well, right? And now conversely, somebody who is in a creator mindset, they're going to be at the top where the tips of your fingers are, right? And so as, as you move up to that creator mindset, you become more and more open to allowing the world to enter into your personal space. And this includes intuition, right? And so somebody who is in a creator mindset will have lots of ideas and, and think, oh, I can do this or I can do that or, or the possibilities of being able to solve a problem or attack a new challenge becomes very possible to them right? Whereas if you're in a victim mindset, you don't control anything. Somebody who's in a creator mindset controls everything, right? So I think that's uh, having that, that visual is super, super helpful. Just know that the lower that you go down into that V, the less and less control you have, or you're, you're giving to yourself, right? Okay. So I hope that helps you to understand kind of the difference between what a victim mindset does and a creator mindset. So how in the world do you get out of a victim mindset? And I want you to keep in mind that you can only do this for yourself. You cannot do this for somebody else. And that is because only they can change their mind. 
Now, I think the best way, if, you, if you're dealing with somebody who's in a victim mindset, is just to ask questions, right? You know, open-ended questions that help them maybe to understand where they're at, because that's the thing. If they don't know they're in a victim mindset, you cannot change it. And so that that leads us to number one of how to change. You have to recognize where you're at. You have to understand, oh, I'm totally being a victim there. Now, it's also important to realize that you can subscribe 100% to being in victim victim mode and it will affect everything or sometimes that will creep in in just different situations, right? And so you have to be aware, okay, in this situation, am I being a victim or a creator? And so pay attention to the things that you tell yourself. And the excuses that you come up with of why you can or cannot do something, right? So, so be very, very aware and recognize where you're at if you are in that victim mindset. The next thing you need to do is understand the impact of being in a victim mindset, the, the impact that it has on you, right? And so what, what has that done to you? I know for me, when I was deep in the throes of it, I felt very internal. You know, I, I, I had a really hard time feeling the intuition and the, you know, feeling like I could do anything and feeling like I had control over anything. And, and so I, I could recognize that yes, I was a victim and mind you, I didn't even know that existed. I I had to learn what it was and go, Oh, well, do I do that? You know? And, and then once I realized that I indeed did, it was honestly shocking <laughs> to me. Like, like, it was like, oh my goodness, like, I can't believe this is happening. The next thing you need to do after recognizing and then understanding the impact is to take responsibility. You have to own everything. You have to own the bad. You have to own the good. Now, this can be really, really hard because humans have a tendency to give excuses as to why bad things like you didn't accomplish something or why bad things happened to you or, or why things didn't work out the way you wanted them to now. And that is really, really hard. (laughs) It can be super, super hard and also hard to realize that the excuses that you come up with are just that excuses because you don't want to deal with something. Right. And so when you take that responsibility, it can be kind of hard. And I'm not going to lie. It was really tough on me because for a time I felt like, oh, I'm a horrible person. (laughs) You know, I'm doing this to myself. Right. And, um, but here's the, here's the thing though, when you are able to accept the bad, you're also able to more fully accept the good because you can go, oh, I Maybe I, whatever I did came, you know, that came out to be a, uh, that was a bad choice. And so I got a bad result, but Hey, look at what I did do. And that this was awesome. I made a good choice and I can fully accept the responsibility of, of me being able to accomplish something on my own, right? That win is all mine. It's not somebody else's, right? And so taking responsibility and owning everything is equally difficult and joyous. And I can't even tell you the joy that I felt when I finally discovered, oh, I have the power to change because life isn't just happening to me. I can make it happen for me. And that's all totally up to me. So that's, that is super, super empowering when you can take that responsibility. The next thing you need to do is make that decision to change, right? So if you can see it, you can see what it's doing and you can take that responsibility. Now that gives you the power to make lasting changes. You can go, oh, okay, I made a wrong choice there. I'm going to decide to do something different and the, I'm going to get a different result next time. You Because you own everything, you have total control over everything. And so when you decide to change, it is lasting. So that's, and that's so, so, so exciting. Now, when I talked with Bernadette, she mentioned how she employed empowering strategies. If you'll remember, she talked about 
you know, Wonder Woman and how Wonder Woman has the cuffs and she deflected um, the the bullets that came her way. And you can also, you know, stand with your arms akimbo with your with your hands on your hips. And sometimes just standing like that with your feet apart, shoulder shoulder width apart with your hands on your hips, it it just feels so much better. So you can gamify things. This is another strategy that Bernadette talked about. You can wear clothes that make you feel better, which is something else that she talked about. And another one that I've done is you can turn on music and you can sing and dance. You can exercise. You can do so many different things. But it's really important to move your body and do things in a way that helps you to feel that you have control, that you have power. And what what that does is it gives your brain evidence that you do so because you're retraining your brain. And so once you've given yourself enough evidence, then it becomes a little bit easier, a little bit easier until it's a lot easier until it's that's how you are all the time now. And I will say one caveat. 100% is not realistic to be in creator mode. It is a human condition to continually move back into that victim mindset. And so it's like, you know, flying a plane, you're constantly redirecting yourself. And so that's why we come to the last one where you commit every single day to not deflect responsibility, to take that responsibility head on and accept it and accept the good and the bad so that you can make the lasting changes every single day. Now, when after I was kind of coming out of this, I realized something very, very important. And that's this, that honesty is the precursor to freedom. And this has become one of my guiding mantras. I love this. And I'll say it again. Honesty is the precursor to freedom because it is really only when you are truly honest and you don't give yourself any excuses and you see things as they truly are that you can make lasting changes. Honesty is the precursor to freedom. Now, when you remove that victim mindset, you kind of create a vacuum and nature abhors a vacuum. And so you have to consciously replace your victim mindset thoughts and emotions and actions with creator thoughts and emotions and actions. So what does having a creator mindset look like? We've kind of already touched upon this. It just means taking 100% responsibility for your thoughts, for your emotions and your actions and the results that they create, whether those are good or bad or just anything in between. Now, what happens when you make that switch to having a creator mindset? Well, you are free to create the life that you want. Now, instead of life happening to you, life is happening for you because you're making it happen. You are free from external constraints and free to dream. You are open to more confidence, self-awareness, and boldness. You love yourself, and as an extension, you love other people. You are free to be who you divinely are. This is what I mean by honesty as a precursor to freedom. Now you are free to be who you divinely are. And I believe that with all my heart because I've experienced it. I can't even tell you what a different person I am because I have taken full responsibility most of the time, right? (laughs) Because 100% doesn't really happen. But I'm also willing when I fail to, to call myself out on it. I was just in an accountability group this morning and I said, you know, you know, I completed this, but it was, it was not done to my full capacity. You know, I, I kind of did a crappy job (laughs) doing it. And, you know, even though it super sucks to admit stuff like that, At the same time, I'm not afraid to because I know that when I'm really honest with myself, it gives me a place where I can identify that, you know, a place where I can identify clearly of where I need to make some changes. And so honesty is the precursor to freedom. So be free, my friends. Be the creator you were meant to be. 
And until next time, remember that your purpose is in your story. Take care. Celebrate your dreams, let them take flight, for you are a star, shining bright in every step you take. Let your